What's up, y'all? It's your girl Eve here, and I have some big, exciting news. Um, actually, I think some of y'all already know that I have a book coming out. Who's that girl? It's coming out in the fall, in September. What y'all really want uh, is right here with me. Woo! Eve, aka the Pitbull in a skirt, was once upon a time killing the rap game, but she didn't start off as a rapper. She was singing in the choir and was part of a female group, but it wasn't until the group ABC Another Bad Creation came out that made her want to rap. The first rap group she was part of was the Dope Girl Posse, and after that she formed a rap duo called Egypt, which didn't last long but was only preparing her. Around this time was when she realized that she wanted to be a battle rapper and would battle all the guys around her any chance she got, helping her to get that aggressive edge. This all helped to create her persona of Eve, because she was aggressive yet showed some feminine side to her. She looked up to rappers such as Queen Latifah, MC Light, and Salt and Pepper, because she says that they still brought that sexiness to the rap, but they had a guy swag to them, and that was the lane she wanted to be in. After graduating high school, she started stripping, but that didn't last long. She says only about two to three months, and she says that she was a horrible and lazy stripper too. <laughs> Hey, I get it. The whole life wasn't for her. While stripping, she says one night Mace walked in and started asking her a lot of questions. She had told Mace she knows how to rap and she ended up rapping for him. He liked what he heard and told her to go pursue rap and leave the strip club if that's what she really wanted to do. So I was like, all right, the way I can make money to get out of my mother's house is start stripping. So I started stripping. I was a lazy stripper though. I was the laziest stripper you could ever meet. And I only did it for two months. And I was lazy because I would rap in the club instead. Of right, right, that's right. No, that's smart. Well, I was like, it was like, this is what I want to do. And I met a rapper named Mace. I don't know how many, if you know about hip hop. I met uh -huh. Mace and he looked at me one day and he said to me, he was like, come here, you're not, you're not supposed to be here. And I was like, you don't know me. I'm, you know, attitude. I was like, you don't know me. He was like, no. He was like, why don't you get dressed and bring all your friends? And that night, he drove me around and we rapped all night, back and forth, until the sun came up. And I never talked to those girls again. I never went back in the club. And I knew that that was a message. I knew that wow. that was a message. Because I wasn't like those other girls. And no disrespect to anyone. Some time had went by and her manager at the time let her know that an A&R from Death Row was coming into town and that she should go audition for him because he's the right hand man to Dr. Dre. Eve met up with him and he told her to rap. She only rapped about one verse in a hook and he told her to stop and that she wanted to sign her. He told her to get her stuff packed in two weeks because she was going to LA. While in LA, she recorded a demo for Dr. Dre. And when he heard it, he wanted to sign her right away and he did. She was now part of the Aftermath team. But unfortunately, at the same time, Eminem had just got signed to the label as well. Even though Eve was a hot female rapper out of Philly, Eminem was a new phenom at the time. A white rapper that can actually rap very good and battle, and whose sense of humor was like no other. With Dr. Dre putting more emphasis on Eminem, Eve felt like she was getting put to the side. She would always ask Dre when they were going to record and pop up to studio sessions to bug him about recording music. After a while, Eve was eventually dropped from the label eight months later. After returning home and settling back in, she would get a call from her manager to go to New York Powerhouse Studios. Because Dre was very occupied with Eminem, Jimmy Iovine suggested that she go try with the Rough Riders. When she got to Powerhouse Studios, she says there was a bunch of rappers there, and basically everyone was there to audition to be in a group. After showing her skills and spitting back and forth among the men, she passed the test and became the first woman of Rough Riders. In 1999, her debut album, Let There Be Eve, dropped, and when it did, it was received well by the critics. Cause at the time, the Lil' Kim Foxy Brown thing was booming, where you had female rappers over-sexualizing themselves. Meanwhile, Eve was different and dropping songs like What Y'all Want, Got A Man, and especially Love Is Blind. That song was very effective because it was about domestic abuse, kind of like a PSA type of song raising awareness, especially at that time. She would continue to drop hot songs and was doing more features and killing them with songs like The Roots, You Got Me, Missy Elliott, Hot Boys, The Locks, Ride or Die Bitch, and so, so much more. 
She even started to get into acting as she was in the movie Barbershop by Ice Cube and Triple X with Vin Diesel among few. She was just getting her feet wet. She also had her own sitcom show on the UPN network called Eve. I remember watching the show and it wasn't that bad, but unfortunately it only lasted for three seasons, which is a great run for someone new to this. While her career was rising up, her love life was not the best according to her, was when she was dating longtime boyfriend Stevie J from 97 to 2003. She says that he wasn't very supportive of her and that being with him led to depression and her drinking a lot. There was even the sex tape that leaked of them, which she says she was really hurt by and got the FBI involved. Man, they were both laying down and Stevie J was just jamming that dildo on her. But the shit was only like six seconds. Damn. She's an original Dre female rapper type. Yeah. You know what else she was original? What? Original sex tape. I mean, oh, why, we are, why yeah, you yeah, even bringing yeah. that up? You was one of the first. Nigga, I ain't put that, that shit up? out myself, I though. I know. Nobody, nobody put out their yes, sex tape Yes, they did. They all, all the rest of them did. All so who all the, rest the rest of them, them have a film crew. Sex tape? I, I Crazy don't know. Crazy ass Stevie J. <laughs> Stevie J. <laughs> why y'all just starting? I don't know. You know damn Stevie. well Stevie J put that mother effort tape out. <laughs> I don't know. Lip lock. But that wouldn't hinder or damage her career at all. After dropping more albums like Scorpion and Evolution, she would go on a long hiatus from music and didn't drop another album until 2013, her Lip Lock album. In between that time, she was just dropping singles and appearing in features for others. She made sure to keep expanding her career as she got older. In 2017, she joined the cast of the Talk Live show and the show was even nominated for an Emmy two times while she was there. But after three years, she decided to leave the show. This was at the time of COVID and she was in Britain filming remotely. But COVID had messed up a lot of plans and people being able to gather for work, which just became too hectic for her. You guys have been beyond supportive. I was so scared to call you and tell you that I was leaving because I was like, I don't wanna like, I don't wanna leave. It's the hardest thing, it's, a bit, it's very bittersweet. And I was actually really worried to talk to you. And the first thing that happened was that you all were like, girl, we're happy for you. You better go do your, you got stuff to do, you better go. And I was like, oh my God. It was the most beautiful feeling to feel supported. She was in the UK with her husband and his family during the COVID lockdown. Maximilian Cooper, Eve's husband, is founder of the Gumball 3000 Entertainment Group. They started dating back in 2010 and got married in 2014. She welcomed her first child with him in 2022, their son named Wolf. Wow, Eve has come a very long way from the streets of Philly to moving to London with her new family. So what is she up to these days? She's still doing her thing, performing, hosting, you know, and so much more. She just finished up her book called Who's That Girl, which is coming out in September. So she's still keeping her foot on the pedal and staying busy as usual. It's always beautiful to watch someone grow from the pit bull in a skirt to living a softer life. Eve has got it made, y'all. Who's that girl? <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching the video. Make sure to check out other videos like this on artists from the 90s and 2000s on my channel, where I just like to explore and see where they're at now. But yeah, make sure to support and hit the like button, drop a comment, and I'll see you guys on the next one. I'm out.